Hi, Mike from the Rural Montana family. This week, Aptera started a change.org petition in order to federally mandate a US charging standard involving this plug. We have many standards in the US, but the standard doesn't mean it is the law or anybody has to do it that way. It's just a standard. And standards can be established by many different people. And they can be adopted by some, but not by others. And this is currently what's going on in the US with EV charging. In Europe, actually, they're on their way to have a mandated charging standard, which is the CCS Type 2. I believe they're phasing everything else out by 2030 and every car, every EV that will be produced will have to abide by the CCS Type 2 standard. In the US, we don't have that. We don't have a regulation uh, that brings us down to a certain standard. We have multiple standards here, like we're still using the Chidemo, we're using the CCS Type 1, which is different from the European one. Then we use the what we consider uh, the J1772, which is basically the Type 1 plug without the DC fast charging. So we're a little bit all over the place here because we also have a Tesla standard. And so we got all these different standards, but these standards are not federally mandated or regulated and no car manufacturer has to uh, abide by a certain rule. They can choose which one ever they want to. That creates quite a bit of confusion mainly for the consumer, because there's all these different plugs out there. This is kind of like going to the gas pump and you got three different kinds of gas and it's like, uh, what do I get, right? Uh, it's just with EVs, if you go to a charging station, you may not have the plug there that you need to charge your EV. And that can be kind of inconvenient. So having a standard for all EVs in the US that are all the same would make it much easier for us consumers because we can go then to any charging station and just charge. Also, what would be nice is not to have different types of plugs. Like, why do we have a type one plug, which is the J1772, and then we have a different plug for the fast charging. Why could, not, could it not be all the same? If you look at the Nissan Leaf, they actually have two plugs on the car. They have their Jademo for DC fast charging and they got the Type 1, the J1772 for AC charging. Again, that can be a little bit confusing for people. Well, for us, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of EV geek, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I know what's what, but for the average person, they don't care. They just want to charge. They don't care if it charges with AC or with DC. They just want to charge. That's all they want to do. And so that's why it would be great to have an actual mandated standard in the US. So why don't we let Aptera explain what they think about the current standards out there. You know, years ago, uh, we saw the evolution of the J1772 connector. And I think we all marveled at the um, inadequacy or elegantness of that connector, that it was, uh, it was big and clunky and looked like a hairdryer or, you know, something else. It just wasn't, it wasn't elegant at all. And then, uh, then one day, uh, Tesla brought out their charge plug and it was beautiful. It was this, you know, elegant little, you know, comfortable handle that you just shoved in an electric vehicle. And I was, you know, I thought like, oh, electric vehicles are the future. Like, 
like that little plug will get even more elegant over time. And uh, sadly, the opposite has happened. <laughs> it, it hasn't gotten more elegant than the Tesla charging standard. has gotten worse. You look at like Chatamo came out right after Tesla. And then we got uh, CCS and these DC fast charge plugs. I mean, they're bigger than grandma's arm. And you got to plug them into your vehicle. And they get these big clunky cables. I mean, uh, the Tesla charging standard is what the U.S. standard should be. Um, they're installing charging networks cheaper than anybody else. And their charge plug is the most elegant solution out there by far. 150 kilowatts through a little tiny handle that that even, um, you know, your child, uh, my child's 10 years old. He's kind of a big boy now. But that even your child can plug in. Uh, not these big monstrosity of chargers that have these crazy, you know, cables and, you know, locking mechanisms. And it's just... Uh, it, it infuriates me to see the state of some of the charging standards when we could have the Tesla standard. So now that we know what the Terra thinks about those plugs, what do you think? Are they right? Are they wrong? Should we have a standard? Should we keep going as we have been with all these different standards? Or should we really switch to the one that Terra thinks is the one to go with? Why don't we go look and compare some of those plugs? Well, you could say, I mean, what's the problem with this plug, right? I mean, it's much smaller, it's easier to handle. And yes, sure, my daughter, my wife can plug this one in relatively easy. That's not a big deal. But still, it is relatively big and clunky. One of the big disadvantages is this here. It's got a mechanical lock right here on the plug. On the Tesla, we don't have that, there's nothing here. It's all smooth, nothing there, okay? It still locks in the car just like this one, but the lock for the Tesla plug is on the car. While here, we got the lock right here. And guess what? If you drop this, there's a chance of this lock breaking. And I actually do have one of those with a broken lock because if you drop the plug, well, it can break. And it's just not good to have this mechanical latching locking thing on a handle like this because it will get dropped. Uh, possibly if you lay it down, stepped on, driven over, whatever, it's easily damaged. It's kind of fragile in a way. So this is not a good design. If we look at this here, we got nothing. There's nothing on here. It's just a hard plastic handle. There is a button up here so that we can disengage the charging just like here. When we press this to actually unlock it, this also stops the charging. So we have a button on here, but it's a micro button that's inside. And uh, so here we, we don't have anything physically that really could break. I mean, obviously you can still break it somehow, but uh, this is sleek clean and just so easy to handle. Okay, came over to the Missoula Electrify America charger here and we got the Chidemo here and we got the CCS on the back here and just look at this. I mean, just that size difference. So let's pull them out real quick. I mean, this is huge. This is super heavy. This, uh, I would say this is about 10 pounds, five kilograms or so. It's pretty darn heavy. Look at the size differences here. And the size difference right here. I mean, it's obvious. This is clunky and hard to move. This is super easy. Now let's take a look at the CCS. This is much lighter than the Chidemo. So it's definitely an improvement from the Chidemo. But look at the size. Again, the CCS is much, much larger, uh, way larger. We're just super small with the Tesla plug compared to this. And this is still, this is relatively hard to plug in because we gotta have the correct shape here. And it's compared to this, this is even a little rounded here. So it plugs in super easy. This is much tougher to plug in, but just look at the size, how much this requires on the car size-wise compared to this. So definitely the Tesla plug is much smaller. 
So and here we got the J1772, the Type 1, and so this is a CCS Type 1. As you can see, the top part here, they're basically the same. Um, the CCS only has three pins for communication. It doesn't have the two pins that are used for AC charging since we got the bottom DC pins here. Well, you got to see the different plugs now and you've seen the physical size differences and you may have experience with one or the other. We do have experience with mainly the Tesla plug and the CCS. And I have to say the Tesla plug for us is superior. With the Tesla charging standard, we never had any issues plugging in or anything or communication wise. With the CCS, yes, we did have issues. And uh, we had issues multiple times where it would not establish a communication. It could not initialize charging and we had to push in on the plug until it initialized or hold the plug up, st things like that. And at first we thought maybe it's the car we have, the bolt we had, but it's not the bolt. Then we thought maybe it's Electrify America's chargers. Maybe they're not so great. But it turns out with uh, doing some research, the problem is not just here. The problem is also in Europe with the type two CCS. They have the same issue and it, it has to do with the pin location. The communication pins are in the top part of the CCS while the big pins are in the bottom. And this seems to be the problem with the size of the plug. And it, it just can't establish a, a great communication. And everybody seems to have problems with that plug at one time or another. With the Tesla plug, we never had that issue. We always just plugged in communication was fine. Also with the Tesla plug, it's easy to handle. When we picked up the first Tesla and my daughter was 10 years old, I showed her how to plug it in. And from there on, on the way home from Seattle to Montana here, she was the one that hopped out of the car and plugged the car in at every supercharger and unplugged it again no problem whatsoever. Also, my wife never had an issue with plugging in the Tesla. It's super easy to do. On the other hand, with the CCS on our way home, also from Seattle where we picked up the Bolt, we had issues plugging it in. It was tough. It was hard for me. It was not easy. And my wife tried to plug it in and she struggled with it. She had an extremely hard time. My daughter tried and she gave up. She couldn't get it to plug in. It was just way too hard to line all this up and get it in there. And at that time, my daughter was two years older than when we got the Tesla. So she was stronger and, but still she couldn't plug it in. So I feel the CCS is way too big, way too clunky, way too complicated and way, way too hard to handle. Also with the CCS, we still have two types of plugs while well, they're combined in one. So for DC fast charging, we got this big clunker, but for AC charging for level one or level two charging, we still have another plug and that other plug has issues as well. So we uh, love the Tesla plug okay and we're not like biased to Tesla we we love any EV out there and any EV should be as good as possible and every EV that has a CCS or a Chidemo could be better by actually using the Tesla standard plug for charging that would be way more convenient and much better for all of us so we are in favor of uh, Terra's petition and we did sign the petition and we would love if you would sign the petition too that would be great but this is totally up to you let me know down below in the comments what do you think about it do you love the CCS plug is this the way to go do you think or should we improve EVs by putting the Tesla plug on it 
Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you would like to have a Tesla plug on your EV that doesn't have one, make sure you go and uh, sign that petition. I also put a link down below in the uh, description. So you can go down there, click that link and uh, go sign that petition. Also make sure that you go and check out our Red Bubble store where we have t-shirts and other items um, inspired by sustainable transport and sustainable energy. And this would be another way to help support our channel. The easiest way to support our channel, first of all, is give us a thumbs up on every video, share videos. There's a button right below the, the, the video here where you can hit share and you can put those on your social media. Feel free to share them with anybody and everybody you want to. And even better is if you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. That really helps us out. In any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.